today we've got a nice quick evaluation of a sum problem. And this comes from the 2016 Harvey Mudd Caltech math competition. And while we're at it, I'd like to give a shout out to my YouTube friend, Professor Omar Math, who has a channel and he's also a professor at Harvey Mudd. So make sure and check his channel out if you haven't already. Okay, so our goal here is to find the sum as n goes from one to infinity of two to the n plus one over eight times four to the n minus six times two to the n plus one. Okay, maybe the most interesting thing to notice at first is that this four to the n can be rewritten as two squared to the n power. And then this eight can be written as two times two squared. Whereas this six can be written as three times two to the one. So that gives us some motivation that perhaps in the denominator, we have a quadratic expression where the variable is some power of two. Okay, so let's write out what we actually have. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity. My two to the n plus one is still in the numerator. And in the denominator, I can write two times two to the n plus one all squared. So that would be like this first term right here. I can push this two squared together with this two squared to the n power. And the next I have this is minus three times two to the n plus one and then finally plus one. So that's really motivating because that looks like some rational function where the variable is 2 to the n plus 1. In fact, this looks like the rational function which is x over 2 times x squared minus 3 times x plus 1 where we set x equal to 2 to the n plus 1. And if we're taking a sum of something that looks like a rational function, we wanna be motivated by the fact that sums are fairly similar to integrals. And in order to take integrals of rational functions, we generally use something called partial fraction decomposition. So perhaps we'd like to do a partial fraction decomposition on this object right here. But maybe in order to do that, we probably have to factor this. So let's do a little bit of factorization as well as a calculation required for this decomposition over here. So this x over 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 can be written as x over 2x minus 1 times x minus 1. And then we'll hopefully be able to decompose this as a over 2x minus 1 plus b over x minus 1. So something like that. So let's start by grouping this portion of the equation together and then clearing the denominators. So that means we're gonna multiply by 2x minus one times x minus one. That leaves us with an x on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we have a times x minus one plus b times two x minus one. Great. And now from here, we can evaluate at some kind of obvious values of x in order to get an equation for a and b. So let's see maybe what will work here. So if we evaluate this at x equals 1, then that means the a term cancels because we have a times x minus 1, and that leaves us with 1 equals 2 times 1 minus 1, so that'll be b. So in other words, b equals 1. Okay, nice. And then if we likewise evaluate this at x equals 1 half, what will we get? Well, we get a half on the left-hand side, and then this b term cancels, and we are left with a times one half minus one or negative one half a, that tells us that a equals negative one. Okay, great. So that tells us our decomposition here. So let's maybe motiva may motivate that decomposition a little bit by factoring this denominator. So here we've got this factors as, I still have my two n plus one in the numerator, and then in the denominator I have two times 
2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. And then that is times 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Great. And so, like I said before, x is playing the role of 2n minus 1 over here. Okay, so let's see. I can decompose this via my partial fraction decomposition that we spelled out over here into uh, 1 over x minus 1, that's this term, and then minus 1 over 2x minus 1, that's this term. So 1 over x minus 1 over here corresponds to 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. And 1 over 2x minus 1 corresponds to 1 over 2 to the n plus 2 minus 1. That's because 2 times 2 to the n plus 1 is 2 to the n plus 2. Okay, great. So we're summing something like that. But this really motivates us to see that we have some sort of telescoping action. So let's work that out. Notice there is one more term from this first term than there is from that second term. So let's bring out the first term from this first term. Maybe before we do that, just to be super careful, let's split this sum into pieces. We know each of these converges absolutely because we could do a comparison test with like a geometric series or something. So we, the sum is n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n plus one minus one. And then minus the sum is n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n plus two minus one. Great, and so that's gonna give us that n equals one term from this first sum, that n equals one term is one third, and then we'll have plus the sum as n goes from two to infinity of one over two to the n plus one minus one, and then minus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n plus two minus one. Now we'll perform a change of index on this first sum so let's go ahead and replace n with n plus 1. So if we replace n with n plus 1, when n plus 1 is equal to 2, n is equal to 1, and then n plus 1 becomes n plus 2. So that's the change that we have there. But now this first term is exactly the same as this second term. So we get a nice cancellation of this and this, leaving us with this just this one third. So in the end, our final value for this sum is one third. And that's a good place to stop.